I want to talk about prayer. How many of you love to pray? One, two, three. Okay, a couple of people love to pray. That's good. So I have, um, I have three pages of notes. There are three different sermons, 40 minutes each. Uh, and I'm going to preach them all in 40 minutes. So I'm going to combine two hours of sermons into 40 minutes. All right, wish me luck. I'm going to preach three different sermons in one. Well, they're all, the reason is, um, in our church, in our youth, we're all going through uh, this whole month through prayer team. We're talking about prayer. We're experiencing prayer. And so um, it's all one topic, but just divided into three different services. So our people had to go through three services to hear what you're going to hear in one service. So you are lucky and you are blessed today. But I was able to, uh, by God's grace, to put it together where I can preach to you and together we can experience the blessings of God word through prayer in in three different things so here's the three things that I want to share with you today one I call it the first thing that I call is different needs different prayers we pray all kinds of prayers and our prayers are based on the needs that we have we see the need that we have and that's mainly what we pray about if we see the need of needing a job so we pray for a job if we need we see a need of uh, you know and that we need healing we pray for healing sometimes we just see a need that we are lacking God's presence and so we just come into God's presence and we seek his presence whatever the need we see that's what we pray about and so um the very important thing is to see the right need because a lot of times the less important needs that are not as important to our life stand out to us and we pray for them more than others that are a lot more important into our life. So it's important to see the right need and pray for the right need because God's answers are needs. Whatever we pray for, He answers. And so when we pray the right needs, He answers the right needs and we are blessed more through that. So different needs, different prayers, that's the first um, the first point, the first topic that I want to share. And then the other two are how we're going to pray about these needs. There's two ways to pray about the big needs that, that are important to us. One way you can pray in your private room, in your private prayer. We call it the closet prayer. So that's going to be the second point. And the third point is or the blessings or the power of praying for these important needs in corporate prayer. And we call the when we pray in church, church prayer, and gathering when we gather in church. So those are the three things I want to share. Recognizing the right need, praying for the right need in your private room with God, and praying for the right needs together when we come along in the body of Christ. So the three things, um, that's what everything is going to lead up to. Anything I'm going to say after this, it's all going to lead up to these three points. Um, make sense? Okay. First, Different need, different prayers. What kind of prayers should we pray? What kind of prayers is important? What kind of prayers should the real Christian pray, right? We're talking about real Christians. So what kind of prayers should we pray? Well, first of all, Paul says in Ephesians 6.18, we must pray with all kinds of prayers. Amen? You've read that before? And the reason why I said that first of all we must pray all kinds of prayers is because I don't want you... Uh, to, to get the vibe that I'm preaching today that there's certain prayers you shouldn't pray. That anything I'm going to say does not mean that you shouldn't pray for healing or you shouldn't pray for... Because I'm in, in this part of the sermon, I want to stand out some needs over the other ones. I'm going to say this need is more important than the other one. And because I'm going to make one more important than the other one, I don't want you to feel like the other one you shouldn't pray about it at all. That's why the first thing Paul says, we must pray with all kinds of prayers. So that, that's, that's what kind of prayers we should say. But there are some prayers that we're in need of more than others. Would you agree? There are some some things that are more important to us than others. And so uh, the, it's important that we recognize what's more important for our life. It's important that we recognize what's more important for our eternal life. Not just for the life here on earth while we live, but what's more important for our eternal life. It's important that we recognize. And so what, what, are, what kind of prayers do a lot of times Christian elsewhere pray? Not in this place. Here we pray the right prayers. And at Bread of Life, we pray the right prayers as well. But a lot of times, Christians pray just basic prayers, um, small prayers. Prayers that are, for the things that are written in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus Christ says, do not worry about what? 
tomorrow. Do not worry about what to eat. Do not worry about what to wear. Do not worry what you're going to fill up your tank with. Do not worry about all these things because why? Why? Because tomorrow, is that what you said, tomorrow worry for itself? Because God, who dresses the flowers so beautifully and who feeds the birds, he will take care of those needs. In other words, Jesus is saying that God has already taken care of these needs. So do not, do not, do not worry about this too much as God has already prepared this for you. And, and so and it's easy for us to pray these needs. We don't get disappointed when we pray for food. When we pray before bed and we say, God, give us our daily bread. And next day we go to work and we make money. And then we go to a store and we buy food. And we're like, wow, God is answering my prayer, right? But when we pray for something bigger, and then the first time we pray, the prayer isn't answered, sometimes we could get disappointed. So that's why, in, in, at least in this sermon, I'm going to say some things are bigger prayers and other smaller are, prayers are smaller prayers. Because when we pray for basic things like food and clothing and all that, they get answered very quickly. Because in, God pretty much gave those things to us already. He placed us in the beautiful country that we live in where we get to have education. When we get to have a job, a good job and make good money and go and, and, and buy ourselves whatever we want. So God has already blessed us with those things. God has already blessed us. We live in, you know, when we try to buy a house, we look for a place that is as close as possible to any convenient grocery store so that if we need to, you know, we're cooking something, we're getting ready to cook something and we ran out of salt, we're not doing it the old days where we run to our neighbors and knock on the door and say, hey, can I borrow a little bit of salt? That's what we used to do. We live so close to the store that we'll just run to the store real quick and buy the salt and come back and, and, and cook, continue cooking our food. Okay, so um, God has already blessed us with these things. But there are other things that are more of a priority that I want to put our focus on that we must pray for. And Jesus in Luke, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 4. Jesus came to, um, Jesus came to his, his people, the people that he chose, the people that he loved, to the nation of Israel. He came to these people and he revealed what Jesus specializes in. He says, uh, in other words, Jesus is saying, I specialize in something really special and I want you to pray about these needs. And he's also saying, you have these needs. You have these certain needs and I specialize in answering those needs. So I want you to pray for these needs that I can answer. I'm big enough to answer these needs that you have. They're great needs Sometimes it feels like it's the needs that no one can help you with, but I can help you with those needs, and I want you to pray for those needs. Earlier, Jesus says, do not worry about these things because Jesus gave you food. God gave you food. He's given you clothing. He's given you all that. But here is something that I want you to pray for uh, because I, I specialize in this. And in Luke chapter 4, in verses 18 and 19, Jesus reveals his mission, why he came to this earth. And he says, he, he was reading in synagogue and he opened up um, the scripture and he read, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then later he says, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus Christ is saying, look, more than food, I have came to set the oppressed free. I have come to, to give sight to the blind and I have came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I have come to bless you spiritually. I have come to deliver you spiritually and I have come to bless you spiritually so you would experience spiritual blessings. And that's what I want you to pray to me about and ask me because I can answer those needs. The, the other things God already gave you. The other things God already blessed you with. God God has already given you homes and jobs and all the good things, but we live in a time where so many people go through depression, anxiety, and all kinds of spiritual problems, and often we don't even focus on those things because we're focusing on pursuing other things in life, and we want a better job, and we want a better position in society and in our job place, and so we, we try to achieve those things, and we pray for those things when God's already given us those things, but Jesus says, I have come for something bigger. I've come for something more special and the other things other people can help you with but with this no one can help you with I can only help you with your spiritual life with your spiritual situation so pray to me for the spiritual things and I can answer them They're the bigger prayer is a prayer for our spiritual life 
That's the bigger prayer. And, and if we go to Ephesians, in Ephesians, Apostle Paul prays a big prayer for Ephesians. As he writes this letter to Ephesians, he is praying a bigger prayer for them. And I believe this prayer is for, for us as well. In Ephesians chapter 3, we're going we're gonna to read this prayer and we're going to apply this prayer into our life. In Ephesians chapter 3, he, verses 14 and continue on. This is the prayer the Apostle Paul is praying for Ephesians. He says, for this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I'm going to read this verse one more time. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Pastor Paul saying that when you pray to God, or I hear I'm praying to God, pray he's going to bless you from his glorious riches. God's got so much blessings, spiritual blessings in his glorious riches. Whatever you may ask for, he has it, and he can give it to you. And out of those glorious riches, we're not just about to pray for some small things, for food and on and on. He says, pray for strength and power. We're, we understand here that we're already talking about our spiritual life. He says, I pray so that you may have strength and power. Uh, strength. Here, I'm going to read this. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Sometimes where our biggest problem is, is right here on the inside. We can do things in life. We, we may succeed in our in, in job and, and career and other things. But inside, it's so tough for us to make the right decisions in life, to make the right decision against sin, to make the right decision in favor of God, to make the right decision in favor of, of preaching his gospel or just sharing his love and serving other people. On the inside, it's very often for us hard to make those decisions. And so Paul says, I pray that God, out of his glorious riches, strengthen you with power power through the Holy Spirit on your inner being so you would be strong in here not just eating healthy not just just having a good job and on and on and have a good health overall but I want you to be strong on your inner being so you can make the right decision which will impact our eternity and if we continue reading he says so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power and that is at work within us. To him be the glory in church and Christ through all generations forever and ever. Amen. But Paul is talking is praying for a bigger prayer that Christ may dwell in you and as a result of that you can make right decision and get to understand how deep, how wide, how long, how high the love of God is. When we understand it, we embrace it, we, we accept his love and we are able to go on and love other people and we are able to impact other people with that love. That is so much bigger than just able to have money. That is so much bigger than just able to have finance, uh, health and, and just, just some kind of right place in society. That is so much bigger when we have Christ dwell in us. His power is in, uh, inside of us. We're making the right decision and we are empowered to go and pick, impact other people. And they can also make the right decision. That is so much bigger. Can I get an amen? Amen. God is awesome. So that's what Paul is, 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 is praying for that when we pray, we are got to pray for bigger things we got to pray for bigger things that are more meaningful Jesus says do not worry about the other things do not worry because God has given you those things he's already given you those things we are able to afford anything we can because again we live God just placed us in this beautiful country and we can we can afford things here but the crisis that we may face here is about much bigger things and so we we got to focus our prayer as we pray on on our spiritual life on the bigger things and so the next part that i want to go to and it's a very important part i'm going to just come down here real quick and grab my water if you don't mind the next part that um that i want to focus on is when we pray it's super important super important to pray 
and spend alone time with God and, and, and pr present to God all these things in private prayer, in, 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 in individual prayer with God. Are you guys blessed today? Are you receiving something? Amen? Okay, that's good. That means I can keep going. Okay, so I'm going to flip the page. And I'm going to go, go to the next. So it's very important that every single one of us, that we understand and realize the importance of praying alone with God. There's something so special when we spend that time with God alone. There's something so special. And Jesus spent a lot of time alone with God. And, and what we're going to focus here in as an example of disciples, disciples spent a lot of time, they followed Jesus and, and they walked with Jesus for a long time. And they've seen Jesus spend time with God alone. A lot of times they would spend the day with Jesus and Jesus would perform all kinds of different miracles. And then Jesus would just leave and, and would go and spend time with God. And they didn't fully understand what Jesus was doing and why he was going to spend this time with God. And they didn't ask him, Jesus teach us how to pray for quite some time. In Luke, if we look in Luke chapter 11, the disciples came and asked Jesus, Show us how to pray. And, and so I'm going to read Luke 11, 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place, like he'd been doing for quite some time. When he finished prayer, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. For a long time, they did not ask him this question. Even though they've seen Jesus pray. They've seen Jesus do, uh, you know, just kind of isolate himself and spend time alone with the Father. But they did not ask him this question. But there came a moment where they realized the importance of to learn how to pray, to learn how to be with God, to learn how to talk to God. There was, they came, realization came into their heart to understand this. And it's so important that we realize that and that we understand that in our lives as well. And so there are a couple things that happened that, that, that we can see in the, in the previous chapters that happened that helped them realize and understand the need to pray and the need to spend time with God when, and spend time in private prayer. So Disciples follow Jesus, right? They see all these miracles. They see Jesus help them catch all that amount of fish. And then he, he, he makes out of um, five loaves of bread and two fish, he makes a, you know, a huge meal and feeds a lot of people. And he just heals one person after another, one person after another. And then something even greater happens. Something even bigger happens. In chapter 9 of Luke, Jesus gives power to perform miracles to his disciples. If we read one of the first verses of chapter 9, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And so disciples themselves also start this ministry. They start going and healing and 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 you know healing people and delivering demon possessed and they were glad that they were doing that in chapter 10 Jesus called the 72 even bigger group of disciples he called the 72 disciples and he gave them the same power and sent them ahead of him before he would go to any place they went ahead of him and they did the same things and they even came back to Jesus and they were rejoicing and saying Lord we even demons obey us when we tell them to leave and they leave and they obey us and they were so joyful that these miracles were being performed in their lives so actually some powerful things were taking place in the lives of these followers of Jesus but there came a point when they saw something different when Jesus when Jesus would heal when Jesus would would come into a situation he would bring life into that miracle he did that literally by raising Lazarus. He brought life into a dead person. And by raising the daughter of the ruler of the synagogue, he, he literally brought life into a situation. But most of the time, Jesus brought life even to people who weren't physically dead. When he would heal them, he would do so much more than just heal them. When he would set a demon-possessed person free, he would do so much more than just setting a demon-possessed free. Jesus would come into the right situation at the right time. He wasn't just passing out healings right and left, even though Jesus did so much great things. And the Bible says that there's not enough ink in the world to, to write and, and record all the things that Jesus was doing. But Jesus, when he would do the things, he would 
come into a specific situation, into the right situation at the right time. He comes to the man that was, uh, that was unable to, to, to walk for 38 years. He was, and we'll read that in, in John 5. Um, he was 30, disabled for 30, 38 years. And Jesus could have come to this man at any point. But he came to this man at the right time where he could do more than just heal this man. Where he could, where he could tell this man, get up, your faith have, have saved you. He could do something greater than just, than, just give them, uh, than just give them healing. The woman that was bleeding for 12 years, Jesus could, came, could come into her life earlier than, than he came. But he came to her at the right situation, at the right time. Jesus would bring life into these people. Jesus was knew every situation and he received how would Jesus know he would receive he was God of course but he would receive the revelation from his father when he would come into each situation and he would know where to go and what to do and exactly give life rather than just pass out a miracle rather than just hand out a miracle and we see the example of of uh, I believe in chapter 10 when disciples uh, went with Jesus to the mountain of transfiguration where Jesus was was uh, was transformed and then and he spent some time with Elijah and with Moses and then they come back and there were some other disciples who've who've um, set demon possessed people free before who have healed before but they faced a situation where they could not set a demon possessed person free why was that because what Jesus wanted to do in that person's life was more than just set a demon-possessed man free. Jesus came to give more and disciples, they weren't able to give more. They weren't able to give more than other than the healing. They weren't able to give more other than setting a demon-possessed free. They were, Jesus was able to change the, the heart of the Father who, who, started, who, who started understanding the, His problem of unfaithfulness. Jesus was able to work on the Father. He was able to work on the Son. He was able to work on the whole situation that was there because He had the knowledge from His Father after spending time after time, time after time. He, would able, he was able to receive direction from His Father how to do things where to go and what to do and disciples weren't able to do that and when they noticed that Jesus had something more special in him when he healed something more special he was giving to the people more than they were giving even though they he was healing just like they were healing but he was giving something more to them and that's why they come to Jesus and they say Jesus teach us how to pray and Jesus answers when you pray go into your room close the door behind you and the father sees what has been done in secret he will award you so jesus says we got to pray and, and spend time with him because as we spend time one-on-one -on -one with god we are receiving some special revelation how to impact people around us when we are not we could be christian people we could read the bible we could we could even be leaders in certain groups we could be leaders in, in the whole youth or leaders of just a cell group and, and and we are teaching people but we're just teaching people from from the plan that we were giving by our leader above us and we're just reading a certain Matthew or Luke and John and going over through things but when we start spend time with God we're able to receive bigger revelation how to impact the person that has came into our cell group, the person that came into our life, we are able to give them something greater and something bigger. And that something greater and bigger only comes from a revelation of spending time one-on-one -on -one with God. Amen. And we see that in the life of Jesus. If we turn into John chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 and even 30, Jesus describes how it happens to him. When he spends time with God alone, Jesus says, listen, and then this is not just like any minister speaking. This is not just Apostle Paul speaking. This is not just a regular Christian speaking. This is Jesus Christ himself speaks and says in, in, in John chapter 5 verse 19, Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all He does. Yes, and He will show Him even greater works than these so that you will be amazed. And verse 30, by myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear and my judgment is just for I seek not to please myself but Him who sent me. 
Jesus explains what happens when he is one-on-one -on -one with God. He hears, he receives from the Father. He does nothing other than what his Father tells him to do or whether, other than what his Father shows him to do. And when he spends time with Father, when he fellowship one-on-one -on -one with Father, that's when he is receiving the revelation. That's when Father is showing him what to do and pointing him out the things that he needs to do. And then Jesus himself goes and performs these things and impacts lives of people. Because remember, Jesus came. We read this in Luke chapter 4. I have come to set the oppressed free. I have come to, to bring deliverance and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I have come to do these things. And so Jesus wanted to do more than just heal. More than just pass out, you know, generous healings and, and let people go on with their lives. He wanted to impact their lives so they could have eternal life. And that happened when he received revelation from the Father to go exactly to the right place, to the right situation, when people are ready to receive. People aren't always ready to receive the same word. You can preach the same word to a group of people on one day and they will not be ready to receive it, but you come to them the next day and they will receive it and accept it and, and, and they will apply it into their life because that's just how life is. People aren't always ready to receive the Word of God. And when we communicate with God, when we fellowship with God one-on-one, -on -one, He directs us when to say, what to say, and who to say it to. Amen? Private prayer is a blessing. Amen? It's power. Amen? All right. Um, power and corporate prayer. That's my last point. Am I going too fast or too slow? Do you feel like I'll make the three sermons into one? Okay, power and corporate prayer. Here is, uh, here, is, here is so important. Corporate prayer, I don't know if that maybe that's a very, like a, like a, a, a phrase or a saying in church. We don't really say it that much. Uh, it's a corporate prayer is a, is, a, is, is a prayer when we come together. It's a prayer of togetherness. It's a prayer of unity. It's a prayer of one accord. When we come together and we pray for our, our Friday night prayers or whenever we have our prayers or Thursday nights, Saturday nights, everybody have their, their, their different days for prayer. When church comes together and pray, all in one room we're praying together. But corporate prayer or prayer of unity does not mean... It's, it's not happening just when people are praying all in one room. There could be people praying, praying in one room and that's not a prayer of unity. That's not a corporate prayer. That's not a prayer in one accord. Just because there's a group of people in one building praying out loud during the same song or just during the same period of time, that does not mean it's a prayer of unity. Because you could have a group of people come together and they're all in the same room and one group of people is praying, Lord, I wish our church was more outgoing and I wish we could go to mission trips in Mexico and other places. And there are a few leaders in the church are praying, God, I pray that people would stop leaving to mission trips because if they leave anymore, we're going to have no one to do church service on Sunday. So, Lord, I pray that we have people... Start staying more in church. And other people are praying, God, a prayer worship group would start doing more new songs. And other people are praying, Lord, I don't understand these new songs. I wish we could stick to the old songs. And other people are praying, God, I pray the drummer would play quieter. And other ones are saying, I can't hear those drums. Lord, I pray that we get a better drummer who could drum better. And so, yeah, different people in the same room, but praying for the opposite things. Is that a prayer of unity? No. Right? Prayer, corporate prayer is a prayer of unity, prayer of one accord. When people come together and they are specifically praying in one purpose, in one direction, they want to achieve one thing. And we are seeing some very beautiful examples in the Bible, specifically in the book of Acts, multiple of times when people come together in one accord to pray in the same room but pray also for the same purpose, for the same direction. And those, there was some power revealed through those prayers. First one is written in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 it says they were all in one place, in one accord, praying, seeking God. What happened on that day? Can anyone tell me what happened that day? Chapter 2 Acts, when everyone in the upper room, it's on the day of the Pentecost, when they were all praying in one room, the Holy Spirit was poured out and, and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That day they received the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit and something amazing happened after that. They became disciples, they became witnesses, then they went on witnessing to thousands of people. But they were in the same room in one accord praying for the same thing. 
and power of God was manifested in that place. Because that's a corporate prayer. That's a prayer of people coming together in one accord and seeking for the same thing. And there is a great power when we come together and we put our differences aside. And, and, and when, when the church believes in season and then we see that this is our need. This is what we need as a community, as a church. This is what we need to pray for. And we are praying for this specific need. Something special is happening. And something special happened in, in Acts chapter 12 when apostle peter was locked into jail into prison for second time already he's locked into prison but this time first time he somehow escaped the prison and so second time he's in the prison and they locked him up even more they they have put the chains and tied him up together with the soldiers that were next to him and he was guarded as much as he could be guarded in a bunch of gates and a bunch of guards every he's guarded very well and in chapter 12 we see that the church gathered together in one place and they were earnestly praying and they were earnestly praying and something special started happening when they were earnestly praying in one room for one purpose in one accord they were in the same room and they were more than just in the same room they were all with the same mind with the same need praying before God and as they're praying before God the chains start falling off of the of the hands and of the feet of Peter and while this is happening the soldiers are sleeping no one's noticing what's going on the gates have started to open up and Peter sees Angel and the angel says Peter get up and walk and Peter got up and started walking and Angel led him to a street that he was able to recognize and from then on he made his way to the place where the church was praying for him all that was a result of a corporate prayer when people came together with one purpose, one accord, and they were praying for big things, and big things took place, and big things happened. When we come together, we are to pray together for the purpose that we are called. When we, whether it's our leaders or a pastor, call us together to certain prayer, and we pray. Good things happen. Amen. All right, I'm gonna conclude all of this into one sermon okay <laughs> i'm going to conclude all of this into one sermon <clears throat> we got a life ahead of us we got a life ahead of us everybody here is super young even though i feel old <laughs> but we are all super young and and i including me and all of us we all got a long life ahead of us and in the long life ahead of us there's a lot of things that can happen and a lot of things that can take place and a lot of things that we can ac accomplish. And we are people that live in, in the land of opportunities and we can accomplish a lot of things in this land. We can accomplish success in many different areas. Whatever we will seek, we will find. That's how people are. That's how people are. That's how God created people that when we put our mind into something, when we put our effort into something, we are able to, to accomplish that. And that's why when the people in the Old Testament, if we read in Genesis, we see that people got together and they said, we're going to build a tower and we're going to make a name for ourselves. And God looked them from heaven and says, whatever they put their mind to, they will accomplish that. And so Jesus, God was not pleased with what they were doing. And that's why he came down and he mixed up their languages and they weren't able to understand that but the point in this story is that people are created that way where they can accomplish whatever they put their heart into and so if we are going to focus and if we're going to pray and put all of our worries and all of our things into small things of this world why I say small things is because we can accomplish big things here but when we stand before God they're going to be nothing they're small things they're small things whether you could be rich or strong or buff or pretty whatever you are when you stand before God the other people that did not have anything that you had you're gonna just on the same level the only difference is gonna be what you accomplish for the kingdom of God those are the big things those are the big things and those are the big things that Apostle Paul was praying for and he says I pray that the power of God would be on your inner being and you may understand the depth and the height of the love of God so that you with that love through that love you can impact people around you and so I want to call every single one of us that we put our focus and our prayer and all of our attention to bigger things 
people around us are in need of help if people around us did not need help if people around us were not depressed if people around us was not were not blind and did not understand and we would, would see some sort of future Jesus would not have to come but there was no future for people there was no happiness for people there was no joy for people there was depression anxiety and just the end of the world for people and Jesus came to bring the end of that he came to bring joy to people he came to bring salvation through people and he was doing that the whole time he was here on earth and he was doing that for 2,000 plus years since he ascended to heaven through different people he was bringing joy and bigger purpose into the lives of people and he can use us for that bigger purpose he came to set the oppressed free he came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and he wants us to do the same to proclaim his favor over people to proclaim his favor over people that people can be blessed in him that people can have a good life in him that people can achieve kingdom of of God and then spend eternity with him through Jesus Christ and if we focus on bigger things to do those things God will use us God will use us who cares who cares at the end of the day what we wear what kind of brand it is or how expensive it is and what we drive it doesn't matter what matters is the bigger things and so my call today is that we would focus on the big things that we would focus on the big things let our prayers be about the big things and as we pray about the big things they all start in our private room all of the big things start when we come and we close the door behind us we close the door behind us nobody nobody's gonna see you there often we like to be where we are seen we like to serve in public we like to serve you know often from the stage and in other places where people can see us but when we bring our focus on the big things in private before God not everybody can see that but that brings such a greater impact when we come before God in the private room and we pray for those big things and we seek for those big things and, and, and inside of us we are able to see what we are missing when we stand in the mirror with God God God's light is gonna shine it's like a mirror in, in, our, in our in front of us and we are able to see what we are missing out what we need to change or what we need to focus on and from that on we can change work on those things and allow God's grace to work on those things and as we as we see God's revelations and His change in the private room, in a private prayer. And everybody do that. And everybody receive the same revelation from God. And then we all come into the corporate prayer. Already from our private rooms, we are already all coming in one accord. Because a lot of times why when we come together, we are not on the same page. We are not on the same unity. Because at home, we were not in the private room. Because at home, we did not spend time with God. So instead of coming with revelations, when we come together, instead of coming with revelations from God, we are coming with our own ambitions and with our own wishes and with our own desires. And often we can't get along what to pray about together and what to accomplish together. But when we spend Spend this time with God alone we all receive the same revelation and then when we come into corporate prayer when we come into the public prayer we're all in the same accord and we start praying and the amazing thing starts to happen amen I believe I believe you are a church you are not some kind of sect or cult you're a church and so I believe that every single one of here have a desire as a church to accomplish good things amen you want to accomplish to 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 impact the community around us just like we are a bread of life that's how you are at the life of victory and so this is what we are preaching to ourselves at our church this month this is what we are focusing and we wish the same thing for you i wish the same thing for you guys today that we would focus on big things we would focus on big things because God is going to bring those big things out of His glorious riches. And there's so much of those big things that He can bring into our lives. So much freedom into our lives. So much deliverance into our lives. And so much different gifts and blessings. Anointing of the Holy Spirit in which He can use us and bless us. I want to ask you to stand to your feet. In front of us is a corporate prayer. In front of us is a prayer of, of, of everybody in one room. And... and, 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 and when we go home, we're going to work on our, on, on our private prayer. But right now, we're going to all together pray and ask God, God, 
allow me to see the right needs in my life I don't want to be blinded by the small things I don't want to be blinded by the small things very often we are blinded by the small things we want the small things so much that all we see is that small thing we want to have a certain toy in our life so much that we don't see any other need bigger needs that we have in our lives so I want us to pray that God would open up to us and and let us see the real need that we have and also help us understand the importance of being alone with God once we understand it it's going to be a bigger motivation for us and and from then on it's going to be God taking us on the journey amen from then on once once he reveals it to us and we accept the challenge and we walk with him from then and on it's just a journey that God is going to take us a blessed journey journey full of prayers followed up with a lot of amazing things happening amen let us pray